You can throw this trash. So I said. Hey what is up guys, hi Five Review here again with another phone unboxing and today we are reviewing the Staff 8NS Pro. I hope that's how it's read. It says THAF so Staff. And uh, you will see if it's really a bang for your buck phone. Mm, you'll see on the review. It, yeah, I bought this on Shopee by the way. So. But before we pre your oh, that's gonna ruin the mic. But before we move on to the unboxing, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit that like and that notification bell if you want. And let's proceed with the review. Okay, now we proceed with the unboxing, and you can see there's a lot of bubble wrap, and that that's got to be a plus for the seller because that's gonna keep our package safe uh, during transit, especially you know here in the Philippines, packages aren't really handled that well. You can see the box; it looks premium. It looks the part. It, it's nice, has nice pictures and details. Just looking at the box, you wouldn't imagine that this phone only costs less than 3,000 pesos. It actually looks a bit premium. And compared to local phones, it feels nice. By the way, I have a unboxing knife for this time. Uh, <laughs> I used to use just a cutter or anything I could use to cut the plastic. The plastic was hard to keep intact because there was a sleeve and I didn't know at first. It, it didn't look like a sleeve. So now we are unboxing the phone and here we have the phone itself. Now the phone looks like just the one on, as advertised. Uh, it's actually decent looking except that logo, the TAF logo. And here we are peeling it off. There's a tab for that. You can peel off the sticker at the front. I wouldn't call it a screen protector but I think that's the screen protector down below. Now the back also has a protective cover or sticker, whatever you call it. And uh, the phone actually looks like it has a glass, but it's not glass. That's actually a plastic cover on the back. The back sticker didn't have a tab, so it was harder to remove, especially because I was wearing gloves. and. I couldn't open the phone. I, I tried charging it and I thought the phone may have be broken. I thought I was afraid I got scammed. But you're gonna soon find out in the video why. Why it wasn't opening. Now we move on with the accessories. Here we have the standard power brick. I think it's a 5 volt power brick. Sadly not a fast charger but what do you expect from that price range. And we have earphones. Uh, earphones <laughs> you can use that and a standard micro usb cable and i was surprised there's a battery in there i realized the phone wasn't opening because it's a removable battery and i was surprised because that's like old technology nowadays and then here we have the paperwork i don't have time to read all of that and at the very bottom you're gonna see that there's actually a it's a jelly case but the plastic that covers it feels very weird and cheap. It also has a free tempered glass at the bottom of the box. Although there's no, what do you call this, the one to clean the screen to apply that. And here we have everything that comes with the phone and the box. Now the camera has a protective film and as you can see in the video I had actually removed the cover of the back already and installed the battery. And you can see it has a gradient color from different angles you can you can't tell that it's actually made of plastic but the shine on the back gives it away the gradient shine kind of looks like you know those fake UEO cards I was surprised that during the boot up there was no boot up process you didn't have to input your Google Mail there it was already preloaded with Facebook and Mobile Legends so I did what I thought would be safe factory reset but it's still the same. It has share it mess a messenger icon, but the, it's not a messenger. And then mobile legends and Facebook, which I found very weird. There's no Google apps like YouTube, but there is a Play Store, so you can just download them. Now for the security, I was looking if the, this phone had a fingerprint scanner because on the back it looked like it had a fingerprint scanner, but I just couldn't find it. Just the normal locks. 
I later found out a description that it actually didn't mention having a fingerprint scanner. Although it says it has face unlock, you'll find out when you try it for yourself that the face unlock is actually like the face unlock on the first generation face unlocks like on my old LG from 10 years ago. On, yeah, almost 10 years ago. During 2010, it had kind of like a face unlock where it's basically just taking a picture of your face. So it's not very secure. Here you can see me, I'm trying to do the face unlock again, I'm setting it up, but mm, it's just not usable. Anyways, here we tried to proceed with Antutu Benchmark, I uh, downloaded Antutu Benchmark Lite and also I put on the jelly case because I thought it would feel more secure. And anyway, here's the Antutu Benchmark Lite and uh, trying to run the test made some weird glitches and errors. I couldn't run the graphics test that usually happens. This is a purple screen which freaked me out because even a weaker Cherry mobile phone could run it although it took a long time. And the Intuitu benchmark says that it actually runs Android 6 not Android 9 that it advertises. The screen resolution is 480 by 1014 so you're getting a 480p screen only. The camera is 4.9 megapixels only and that's just 5 megapixels on the back and but you get 16 gigs of RAM, uh, ROM and 2 gigs of RAM for real so at least that part is real. During the verification test it <laughs> due to said that the phone is a knockoff. A knockoff of what is not exactly clear. Here we proceed with a gaming test because I wanted to see if the 2 gigs of RAM could actually handle it. At least this might redeem the phone as a as a cheap phone. Maybe you can use it for gaming, casual gaming. And uh, sadly, there's no H, uh, high frame rate mode, although HD mode and supports high graphics mode. Mm, it's it's hard to explain. It has some frame drops, and you can tell that you're playing on a very cheap phone. But if you have good internet, you can probably win a few games. And it's for casual gaming, not for not for pro gaming scenes, okay? Now I tried installing Call of Duty, but then I realized this phone can't download Call of Duty because it's not in the Play Store. Maybe it's not configured for this phone, so I just downloaded PUBG Mobile Lite to test if this game can play this game. So anyway, it has frame rate high and smooth and balanced is all that you get. Although it doesn't really make a difference because the phone is so laggy when you try to play a first person shooter game. And you can see that playing on this is so unbearable. There's a clearly a lag. There's a lag when you press the buttons. You can feel the lag actually. The input is a one, almost a one second delay when you input the command to move and to shoot. So it's so unbearable to play so I don't recommend you try to play anything other than probably Mobile Legends and Among Us. Now let's proceed to the camera. A 5 megapixel shooter which is advertised as 8 is actually usable. For me it's usable. And the camera is very simple like an old camera app. You can see that there's not much details especially when it comes to hair but it's usable probably. and. Details just get blown out when you try to zoom in, but if you can compose your shots properly, maybe you can use it. The front camera is just a 2 megapixel shooter, so it's gonna be grainy. Now taking videos on the phone, there's no OIS, and there's no features that is seen here. Uh, <laughs> the white balance gets blown out, you have to actually press the screen to focus, there's no autofocus in this. Even with a gimbal, the frame rate is, is messy so it makes the video look so shaky. I, I wouldn't recommend using this other than for short videos and steady. Although weirdly enough, under low light, in the studio lights anyway, it performed better than outdoors. <laughs> and that is the end of our review of the Taft A10S Pro. Uh, it's, it will I recommend this phone? Not really. I spent like 2600 on this phone including the shipping and this is all the phone I get. It, it's it's very cheap and the phone was lying about the specs. It, it says it ran Android 9 but in reality it had Android 6. You can't play most high-end games like Call of Duty although, although you can play Mobile Legends if that's what you play. So 
if Mobile Legends is the game for you, this would be a cheap phone for you, but other than that, it has major issues. Sometimes it has major lags, but not during gameplay. It's just, I think it's the UI. I put Nova Launcher here as the original home launcher it had. It, it felt sketchy. The camera sometimes fails, so you have to restart the phone. So overall, I'll give it a high five rating of one. <laughs> this is my first time I'm gonna give a cheap phone a one rating, as it's not really the best phone for 2000 for that price, 2600, including shipping. I would have just gone the extra and went with the Elephone P1 I bought earlier. I had boxed earlier, and it's so so much better than this phone in terms of performance, and that actually ran Android 8. This one lied about. Nine. Also, the camera is a lie. It doesn't run 8 megapixels at the back. It's actually just 5 and the front is 2. So don't expect good pictures here. But overall, don't buy this phone uh, if you're buying a 2600. If you can find it cheaper, then it's probably okay. I'll be selling this probably way cheaper. That's a loss for me. But <laughs> you win some, you lose some in this unboxing business. So let's end this video with a high five.